Welcome to Pega Knowledge Base. Knowledge matters. Subscribe, share, comment, and like. Question, what do you understand by DCO in Pega? Answer, DCO in Pega stands for Direct Capture of Objectives. It consists of resources, tools, application artifacts, and processes for acquiring, storing, and processing data on the integrated Pega platform. Question, which are the different types of assignments? and where are they stored in the PEGA database? Answer, there are fundamentally two types of assignments, the work list assignment and the work basket assignment. These assignments are stored in individual work lists in PEGA. The PC underscore assign underscore work list stores work list assignments. The W PC underscore assign underscore work basket stores work basket assignment. Question, explain work lists and work objects in PEGA. Answer, Work lists and work objects are fundamental concepts that play a crucial role in managing and processing work items within the system. PEGA is widely used for building applications that automate and streamline business processes. Work list A work list in PEGA represents a collection of work items that are available for processing by users or automated processes. Work lists are typically associated with a specific business process or case type within a PEGA application. Users or automated agents can access the work list to view and select work items for processing. Work lists help in organizing and prioritizing work, ensuring that tasks are efficiently distributed among users or automated components. Work object A work object in PEGA represents an instance of a business process or case. It is the instantiation of a case type, which is a template defining the structure and behavior of a specific business process. Work objects contain all the data and information related to a specific instance of a case, including its current state, history, and associated tasks. Users interact with work objects to perform tasks, update information, and move the case through its life cycle. In summary, work lists help manage the pool of work items available for processing, while work objects represent individual instances of business processes or cases. Work lists provide a convenient way for users or automated processes to access and prioritize tasks, and work objects store the detailed information and history of each specific case. For example, in a customer service application built using PEGA, a customer inquiry case type might be defined. The work list for customer service representatives could show all open inquiries, and each work object would represent a specific customer inquiry with details such as customer information inquiry type, status, and a history of interactions. Users could select items from the work list to work on specific inquiries and update the corresponding work objects accordingly. Question, what is the process to measure application performance in PEGA? Answer, measuring application performance in PEGA involves monitoring various aspects of the system, including response times, resource utilization, and user interactions. PEGA provides several tools and capabilities to help you assess and optimize the performance of your applications. Here are some key steps and tools for measuring application performance in PEGA. Performance Profiler PEGA includes a built-in performance profiler that allows you to analyze the performance of rule executions, database queries, and other key components. You can enable the performance profiler by adding the rule utility function PX enable performance profiling activity in the requester's pre-activity processing. The profiler captures detailed information about rule execution times, database queries, and other relevant metrics, helping you identify performance bottlenecks. Tracer PEGA's tracer tool is valuable for debugging and performance analysis. Use the tracer to trace the execution of specific requests or events, monitoring the flow of activities and rules. By analyzing the tracer output, you can identify inefficient processes, excessive database queries, or other issues impacting performance. PAL, Performance, Auto Monitoring, and Logging PAL is a tool that provides detailed performance statistics for PEGA systems. Enable PAL to collect data on system resource usage, including CPU, memory, and database interactions. PAL data can be viewed through the PEGA Diagnostic Cloud or directly from the PEGA platform, helping you identify trends and potential performance issues. Database Performance Monitoring 
Use database monitoring tools to analyze the performance of database queries generated by your PEGA application. Optimize database queries and indexes to improve overall system performance. PEGA Predictive Diagnostic Cloud, PDC. PDC is a cloud-based service that collects, analyzes, and visualizes performance and usage data from your PEGA applications. It provides dashboards and reports to help you understand the overall health and performance of your PEGA environment. By combining these tools and approaches, you can gain a comprehensive understanding of your application's performance, identify bottlenecks, and implement optimizations to enhance the user experience. Regular monitoring and analysis are essential to maintaining optimal performance as your application evolves and scales. What are step status good and step status fail in PEGA? In PEGA, step status good and step status fail are statuses used in conjunction with the weight shape in a flow to control the progression of a case or process based on certain conditions. The weight shape is used to introduce a delay or pause in the flow, allowing the case to wait for a specific condition to be met before proceeding. Here's an explanation of these statuses. Step status good. When a weight shape is configured with step status good, it means that the case will wait until a specified condition is met, and the status becomes good. The condition for transitioning to good status can be defined using expressions or other conditions within the weight shape configuration. Once the condition is satisfied, the case will proceed to the next step in the flow. Step status fail. On the other hand, when a weight shape is configured with step status fail, it means that the case will wait until a specified condition is met and the status becomes fail. The condition for transitioning to fail status is also defined within the weight shape configuration. If the condition is met, the case will follow the flow path associated with the fail status. These statuses are often used to introduce conditional pauses in a process. For example, you might use a weight shape with step status good to wait for an external system to complete a task or for an approval to be granted. Alternatively, step status fail might be used to pause the flow until a certain condition is met, but if that condition is not met within a specified timeframe, it triggers a different path or action. In summary, step status good and step status fail are statuses associated with the weight shape in PEGA flows, providing a way to control the progression of a case based on the satisfaction. Question, what does workspace or studio mean in PEGA and what types are offered? Answer, in PEGA, the term workspace or studio generally refers to the integrated development environments, IDEs, where developers design and build applications. There are two main types of workspace offered, App Studio and Dev Studio. App Studio is primarily for business users who want to design and build applications without deep technical knowledge. It offers a more intuitive, drag and drop interface for creating applications. On the other hand, Dev Studio provides a more detailed and complex environment for developers who need to delve into the underlying architecture, build integrations, and manage the finer aspects of the system. Question. Can you describe classes in PEGA and list the different types? Answer. Classes in PEGA are similar to classes in object-oriented programming. They act as templates or blueprints to create objects and define the properties and activities that an object can have. PEGA has three types of classes, work, data, and integration. Work classes hold business process or case-related data, data classes manage data instances related to business rules, and integration classes are used to manage external data and integrations. Question, could you explain the concept of DCO in PEGA and its benefits? Answer, DCO stands for Direct Capture of Objectives. It is a collaborative methodology used in PEGA to gather and implement business requirements directly into the application during the development process. Benefits of DCO include improved communication between business and technical teams, faster development cycle as requirements are implemented as they are gathered, and less rework since the requirements directly inform the application design. Question, what is SLA in PEGA and why is it important? Can you list and describe different types of SLA? Answer, SLA, or Service Level Agreement, in PEGA is used to ensure that a work object or assignment meets certain performance expectations within a specified time period. They are important to maintain business standards, drive urgency, and ensure service delivery. Three types of SLAs can be defined in PEGA, Goal, 
deadline, and past deadline. Goal is the desired time to resolve a task, deadline is the time limit by which the task should be completed, and past deadline occurs when the task exceeds the set deadline. Question, what are the different types of layouts in PEGA, and how would you create a dynamic layout? Answer, PEGA provides different layout types for user interfaces, including standard, column, dynamic, smart, and repeating layouts. To create a dynamic layout, go to the section rule form, click on design, add a layout, dynamic layout. In the configuration panel, you can add the necessary settings to make it dynamic, such as adding conditions to display or hide certain parts based on the evaluation of an expression. Question, can you explain the difference between page validate and property validate methods in PEGA? Answer, page validate and property validate are both used to ensure data integrity in PEGA. Property validate validates a single property value based on predefined validation rules. Page validate, on the other hand, validates an entire page of data, making it a broader check. It calls the property validate method for each property in the page. Question, how would you define access groups and access roles in PEGA, and what are their differences? Answer, access groups and access roles in PEGA are part of the system's security model. Access roles define what operations a user can perform on a certain class and its instances, including creating, reading, updating, deleting, and executing activities. On the other hand, access groups are collections of access roles that are assigned to a user or a group of users. An access group can also define the application that the user logs into, the default portal for the user, and other user-specific settings. Q9. What is a requester type in PEGA and types available? A 9. Requester type in PEGA defines the nature of the user or process that's interacting with the PEGA system. There are five main types of requesters, browser, portal, app, batch, and async processor. A browser requester is a human user accessing PEGA via a web browser. An app requester is an external application interacting with PEGA through services and connectors. A batch requester refers to internal system processes, such as agents.async processor. The agent rule is replaced with job scheduler and queue processor in PEGA 8, hence new requester type is introduced to identify job scheduler and queue processor. When a request is made to display the port-led applications in the web browser, then PEGA creates them as a requester of type portal. Requester ID for these types of requesters starts with the letter P. Question. Can you explain the concept of flow action in PEGA and list the different types? Answer. Flow action in PEGA represents a task or an action that a user can perform within a business process. Flow actions determine the options available to a user at a particular stage in the flow, driving the case towards resolution. The two main types of flow actions are connector and local. Connector flow actions drive the process forward by connecting to the next stage in the process. Local flow actions, on the other hand, allow for actions like updating data or adding notes that don't drive the process forward, 